Greetings and welcome to another episode of Dowerling's Podcast Project. My name is Martin Wilsey and I'm your host. And I think tonight's going to be kind of all about me. Um, our topic tonight is writer's retreats. And it's the topic because I just got back from a three-week uh, writer's retreat. And um, I really, really, really super enjoyed it. In fact, my background here, I can show you. My retreat was in this little cottage. Um, this is actually the guest house at my brother's place in the mountains above uh, Napa Valley. And it's really awesome. You can see right here, this is an old growth redwood that its trunk is almost as big as the cottage. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a really amazing location. And um, it's perfect for a writer's retreat uh, uh, in many, many, many ways that I'll go into. Uh, it's, it's a one bedroom. It does have a kitchen. It's got a bathroom. And it's isolated. And it does not have internet. <laughs> um, nice. The only internet I had while I was there um, was on my phone. And it was a colossal... Mm one bar of internet so I could get texts and I could oh get calls, God. but I could not use my hotspot in particular. It was, a, it was. Um, that work out when you, sometimes when I'm writing, like I can't continue until I figure out like a, a, some information or a fact that I don't know. So I Google it really fast and I write it. How did you do without doing that? Well, you, I could actually Google. Okay. Stuff. It was just really slow. And if I, you know, if there was images or stuff like that, um, it was a royal pain. And mm. uh, speaking of that, you know, the uh, I, I found that uh, getting ready for the writer's retreat was really, really super important. Uh, keep in mind that I live on the East Coast in Virginia. My brother lives on, in California. So, uh, you know, I, I flew out there. I hadn't seen my brother in a long time. Um, I got to see both of my children, whom I haven't seen in a long time either. Um, after, after, you know, after I got all the visiting out of the way, um, I went up to the cottage and I closed the door and I wrote for eight hours a day, every day. And it, it's really interesting. I, uh, I was using my Surface Pro. I have, I have this tiny, you know, little laptop. I did all of the the writing on my little small screen. That, that is um, one of the postmortem things that I'll uh, talk about later. But I found that it was, I did a lot of research about writer's retreats and recommendations from other people that had done it. And so I, I found it to be very successful in that I'm already a big planner, okay? I, I plot the hell out of everything and I found it to be very, very useful. I had a very detailed outline for this, the book that I was writing. I had a very detailed timeline, which, you know, at first thought, I, you wouldn't think that that was that important, but it is important because you don't have to worry about it if you've already got all that timing sorted out. It's not something that's going to distract you later. And well, to eliminating fair, distractions is really what it's all about. What were we going to say, Dave? To be fair with the timeline, you were writing a time travel novel. Mm. Well, not this time I was. Well, this one, yeah. This yeah not, this, romance, not this right? Um, that was the one before this. Not Anyways, um, and another thing that you do, do all your research and develop your character sheets before you go. I love Scrivener in that you can do complex character sheets. In, inside of Scrivener, I had all of that preloaded into, into my laptop in Scrivener. So um, being prepared right up front, you know, make sure that your computer, your laptop has got all the right software that you're going to need. And it turns out I mostly just use Scrivener. Um, and I didn't use Microsoft Word. I have, I have it on there, but I never used it. Um, a notepad is really important. I'm surprised how much I actually used a notepad and a pencil on this trip. Uh, that, that was really good. And I, it's I do really interesting. It. Yeah, my, my notepads are like this. 
This oh, okay. is one of my I, typical mopeds. I love okay. these moleskin ones. So anyway, um, the, the main thing, the main success, I actually wrote an entire novel, 61,200 words in 11 days. And, you know, I typed the end after 11 days. I couldn't believe it. And How many um, words is without a day? Well, it actually varied. Um, uh, I think that my highest word count day was about 7,500 words. My lowest was about 3,500. Um, uh, I, I was looking for my notes because at the end of every day, Scrivener makes it really easy to, uh, it tells you how many uh, words you worked that day. And um, um, it, Did you uh, ever take a day off or was it every single day? Um, it was continuous. Um, I didn't take any, any like days off. I took days off in the beginning when I went to visit my son. Um, Brenda actually came and visited uh, out there also. We actually took a week where I wasn't writing um, and my, my daughter visited and stuff. So it was at the bookends of the trip is when I did visiting. But I did only work eight hours a day. And then I would walk down from the cottage and uh, have dinner and hang out with my brother or go out to dinner or go to movies or a winery or something uh, with my brother. So I got to um, uh, visit with him while I was out there. But so you got you like a job life. is the thing. Because once you get in the zone, it doesn't take you long to get in the zone. Because I would have coffee set up first thing in the morning. It's really weird because I was on East Coast time. So I was like constantly waking up at like, you know, three o'clock in the morning <laughs> and forcing myself to stay in bed. And then the time change happened while I was out there. That confused me even more. So I just woke up when I woke up and I just sat down to write when I wanted to write. Uh, some days I finished at 2.30. Uh, most of the time I finished about four o'clock in the afternoon. But, and then um, you had the evening free for dinner and visiting and yep. relaxing. Yep. And, you know, we'd go to the movies. I actually got to go to In-N-Out Burger for the first time in my life. Oh, so uh, that good. Was very I've been for years. Never been there. Very West Coast. What? Yeah, you missing out, Dave. It was really good. I, I, well, it was, it was fun. But speaking of food, I, I found that food's really important if you're doing a writer's retreat like this. I was lucky that I had... A small kitchen in his house and um i planned out breakfast and lunch every day i always had coffee you know the the coffee was set up the night before so i just press one button as soon as i wake up and i would have coffee um immediately which is you know like a, a starting gun for me it's pavlovian even you know drink drinking coffee doing that but it's really interesting by not having distractions you literally don't have anything else interesting to do. Right. You know, there was, there was, he, he has, he has an old school TV, tube TV in the cottage with a VHS player and a bunch of old tapes, but I, I didn't touch it. My, my wife discovered it and was having a lot of fun watching uh, old episodes of Northern Exposure. <laughs> it was really great. It was, it was, that was fun. But, um, eliminating the distractions i it just made me realize in my life how many distractions there are the internet alone is like the ultimate distraction a little something goes bing and suddenly you've lost two hours of productivity literally that's I, I, been happening to me since i got back when I'm not on a podcast, I turn off the sound on my on my computer because I just don't want to be, I don't want to hear email, I don't want to hear texts coming in, I don't want, I, I just don't want any bings. Yeah, there, there's, there's just too much that's in my normal life that's just interesting. I mean, you know, TV shows to watch and, you know, bless my wife for letting me go out for two weeks by myself to actually knock this thing out because... She's like the biggest distraction in in my house. Mm -hmm. I love that distraction. Don't give yeah, me. Yeah, wives are a good distraction. It, she is very, 
she is very distracting let's just say anyways um but you know you want to talk to them you you want to you know have meals with them and hang out and watch t you know do stuff together and stuff like that it's it, none of that's bad but it's distracting mm -hmm. um even my pets you know my cat i had when I do this podcast, I have to lock my cat out of here because oh, my cat loves me and mm -hmm. pays a lot of attention to me and crawls up in my lap all the time. And the cat, I can't, you know, when I'm trying to identify distractions, my pets are a major distraction. I can't believe how much time I spend just paying attention to my pets. It's really well, crazy. I'll give you another example. I, I basically failed NaNoWriMo, which is to reach 50,000 words in a month mm -hmm. because I got a puppy at the beginning of the month. <laughs> Legit. Perfect examples Legit. of uh, I don't it, but distraction but factors. That cost me 20,000 words. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I think that the most distracting things are the internet and television for me because I've got every streaming channel in a known universe. And there's always a new episode of some great show that I need to watch oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Or rewatch um, something like Babylon 5, which is what I'm doing. Yeah, so there's, and, and the, it's really weird how I now realize that it kind of has a gravitational field. You know, I just get drawn mm -hmm. towards it. Next thing you know, I've just watched, you know, five episodes of Wheel of Time, you know. Right. And, it is, it is time, clock time off of, off of the target, mm -hmm. and it's and it's um, it's it's nuts how it all adds up, because, oh. um, like at the, on my writers retreat, I had oatmeal every every day for breakfast, you know I didn't want to have to decide what I was going to have, you know it's those little pouches of instant oatmeal that you, you know, microwave some hot water and just mix up some oatmeal and, you know, that and coffee, that's breakfast. And then for lunch, I always had bag salad, you know, mm -hmm. and some, uh, you know, vegetables. Nice and healthy. For, for lunch. And then, you know, in and out burgers for dinner. Anyways, but so would you say to not decide is powerful. Having to not um, decide what to cook and then cooking it. You know, right. I, when, at home here, I like to cook. It's crazy how much time I spend, you know, doing that. Right. Um, so would you say that for a writing retreat, gotcha. the scenery matters? Like, would, it, would you have a better time if you were on a beach? Well, that, there's a good story for that, too. Because he lives in the mountains above Napa Valley in an old growth redwood forest, right? It's beautiful. I yeah. just can't tell you how beautiful it is. And so one of the important things is ensuring that it doesn't become a button a -thon, which it does, okay? So... One of the recommend recommendations I make when I write all this up, and I'm going to write it all up and put it on my blog so that I can go back and look at it like a checklist next time, because I've already scheduled one for the spring that I'm going to do. Um, not there, but somewhere uh, closer to home. Um, it got to get up and exercise, do something, you know, because otherwise you'll just atrophy. <laughs> I mean, it, it's crazy. You know, just to uh, um, not do anything, and especially there where there's so many things to see it, and some beautiful walks to go, and it's not very populous and not, not much traffic. It was really great to go out and walk every day. Um, I did make the mistake of, you know, hiking up to the ridge, and I ended up turning my knee uh, at one point, and that was a hassle the whole rest of the trip. It really cut into my... Uh, enjoyment of going around Napa and you know the pain stayed yeah I was like limping for another week after I did that right, I was a, I was a jughead but um um 
you know, exercise is really important while you're doing it so that, um, uh, so that's good. So it also kind of gives you a break because if you're, you know, you, you can't get to keep your head spinning constantly full speed um, all the time. So think about something else. Um, let's see, what else do I got on my list? Um, so food, you know, make sure you do planning for food because um, I didn't want to have to go out and go shopping because I ran out of stuff. Um, I did go shopping one time in, in the center of my uh, 11 days uh, just because I like having fresh bags of salad. Um, mm -hmm. But um, uh, we did that in the evening one night. Um, I always like having music when I, when I write. I do playlists for the books that I write that is inspirational music that's associated with what I'm writing. And the fact that there was really crappy connections there, it wasn't streaming <laughs> very well. So uh, luckily my brother um, uh, uh, gave me a thumb drive of uh, uh, good tunage. You know, it's like 16 gig worth of the, uh, MP3s that I popped well, into my computer. Marty, I will tell and, you that uh, I have the same problem at my work. I cannot listen to my music streaming. So you know what I do? I use YouTube Music or, or Spotify. Pre-download the music before you leave. Yes. So if you, if you want specific music, um, make sure you take it with you. Presume that you're going to be offline uh, because... Um, and oh, oh, another thing, my brother also loaned me, he's got one of these little Bose soundbar uh, portable uh, Bluetooth speakers. Awesome. Really, really awesome. So that, that made the experience a lot better. Another good lesson that I learned is having somewhere to work, a good chair. I get spoiled by this chair. You know, I, I bought this chair because it was comfy. It was like the, the most comfy chair that I could find. I didn't plan on chairs at all. So I just had his standard cafe chairs that were in, in his uh, cottage that's kind of, you know, it's kind of like, you know, just a regular, you know, chair that I had to tune up a little bit to make it comfy because I was spending so much time in that chair. Um, another thing I should have planned better was snackage because, um, you know, having a little something that's just there, I ended up buying, um, some almonds that, um, I would just have a bowl of almonds on the table with me. So if I got peckish, I wouldn't be distracted by going and looking for stuff. Uh, so it's, uh, very handy for that. I also discovered... I still need to limit myself to one pot of coffee a day. Because if I drink too much coffee, <laughs> then you spend a lot of more time out of your chair in the bathroom, um, uh, as well as, uh, you know, you, it kind of gets you spinning a little bit too fast. And speaking of have... beverages, one night um, I drank a little too much bourbon with my brother. I'm not doing that again either. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was going to say, uh, so even without distractions, did you find yourself every now and then, like, stopping and staring off into space? I did not. I was, I didn't, I, I did not do a lot of, uh, you know, navel gazing on this. Even though there was, like, really beautiful vistas outside my window and everything, uh, there was a squirrel that would visit me pretty much every day and come up and tap on the window. It's like... Dude, the bird feeder's empty, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, that was that was uh, the most distraction that I had. But um, no, I didn't find myself just like zoning out, doing stuff like that. Um, and I think that's a because I only worked eight hours a day. I never really got overly tired writing and stuff like that. And 
I, you know, I, I hung out with my brother until I got sleepy. I slept when I was sleepy. I woke up when I woke up. I didn't have alarm clocks or anything. And I like having that natural sleep cycle. Eat when you're hungry and sleep when you're tired. That is really awesome when you are uh, fully in, in control of the whole, the whole enchilada. Um, Unless you have a puppy that wakes you up at 6 a.m. every day. That's right. That's uh, another good reason to go somewhere else for your writer's retreat without the puppy, without anybody. Um, another thing that I made a mistake doing, it, it was cooler there than I thought. I should have, you know, make sure you, you know what the temperature is going to be. I uh, had more shorts than jeans. So um, make sure you got uh, clothes. I have borrowing sweatshirts for my brother and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, it's really interesting because uh, uh, it's a really beautiful cottage and everything, as you can see. You can tell right here um, there's a deck off in a pond that you can barely see next to it. So when I, you know, I spiked the ball in the end zone when I was finished, my brother came up and, uh, you know, we sat out on the deck and we had a, a bourbon and a cigar and, you know, like literally celebrated. It's like, oh my God, I cannot believe that just happened. And it was crazy how fast the time went by. And, um, Hey, it, it, it just really, really was uh, crazy. 60, 62,000 words in 11 days. It's nuts. I'm um, yeah, so next spring, um, I've already uh, uh, planned on, uh, I, have, I have some friends here that have a cottage on the uh, Rappahannock River that they're going to let me just go out there by myself for uh, 10 days and uh, I'm going to do another writer's retreat like this. Uh, it, it's going to be uh, um, even more premeditated. I will take everything with me th that I need so that I never have to leave the house and never have to uh, worry about anything. So what questions you guys got? I don't know. I fired mine at you as you were going. So yeah, you you did a good, good job, Shay. Sure. First of all, I think you're a damn overachiever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, about I think I think that um, uh, everybody could do it if you just followed those same processes. The, the The weird thing is, is I think we all you know that have day jobs. You know, we work all day, every day, doing the thing. I I don't know how many words I wrote when when I had my day job. It was a, probably a lot. It was probably a frightening amount. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have distractions and you have the time and you've got zero else to do and you can focus, boy, it happens. Um, I think next time, I think next time I'm going to, uh, get a Bluetooth keyboard so that I have like a full size, full size keyboard for the for the device so that it. Uh, hey, look, you can. There's an interesting yeah, effect. I that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that. Um, what's that? I was just going to say I went to a, a one day riders retreat, which was on a farm, and it was with several riders. And everybody picked a room and wrote for the whole morning and then broke for lunch, wrote for the whole afternoon, and then broke for uh, dinner. And so that one sort of had an element that is lacking in your retreat, Marty, of like camaraderie and almost like responsibility or ac accountability is the word. Accountability. Um, so how do you think you would have done in a, a situation like that where you had other writers doing the same thing right next to you? I would love that. I think that that is one of the things that is one of the few things that could have made this better. Um, well, I, I'd I'm love available. to do that with you guys. I was gonna say I'm available. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that'd be really fun. So, you know, if, if we could be disciplined enough, yeah, to like shut the hell up 
Yep. Go to your go mm-hmm. to your corners, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, no talking. It sort of and, gives uh, you like damn headphones. Yeah. It sort of gives you like a reward. You know, lunch is a reward, and then dinner is a reward. And uh, I don't know. I, I I like the structure of it. It was cool. I do too. I and you know, after we're done with the podcast, maybe we should sit down and like let's we'll talk about it. Sort of sort <laughs> something like that out. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can, we can. But I mean, I think also it might be a good opportunity for David and I to talk about some of our not retreats, but uh, hey, we're on vacation, carving out time to say writing. I'll talk, start because um, I was just at a Doctor Who convention. It was really nice, but sometimes nothing, no good panel is on, and you're just sitting in the bar, whip out the old iPad with its nice little uh, backlit keyboard, and open up the Scrivener, which is synced on Dropbox, and type, type, type. It was a pretty convenient way to I've do it. It's called yeah. something like micro writing, where if you just yeah. have you know, 15 minutes or half an hour, you pull out your laptop or your device, whatever device you have, and you start writing. Um, well, this is completely the opposite of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you've got eight, eight hours, it's crazy. I was averaging like six chapters a day. And nice. it, is, it is very incredibly productive. And when you've got the plot in your head, you can focus. I mean, really, really focus and, and get that stuff on paper, especially if you've got it um, outlined in advance. Uh, I'm sort of, a, I don't know, even at work, the way I work, I'm, I'm kind of a burst mode creator. Um, so the, the idea of having a, a more people around and having that come camaraderie um i could see a i could see a morning writing shift and then a, an afternoon writing shift and then probably for me like a late night writing shift or something like that um yeah. would, would probably work better for me than just you know than just eight hours straight because for two hours i can do phenomenal things but then my mind wanders hmm. i was expecting that exactly i am pretty amazed that I would look, I only look at my watch when I got hungry. It's like, oh, damn, it's already 11.30. And I have been writing for, you know, three and a half hours already. So, yeah, I think, I think that's, that idea's got legs. I, I think that we ought to talk about that more. I like it. I'm in. So do you feel like you're, um, come on, Jeffrey and David, we need questions here. Do you feel like your quality was any different? than if you had spaced out your writing more? I, this is, this is my uh, actual second attempt at rapid writing. And um, the, the book that I wrote just before this one took me 32 days to get it to be about the same length as this one. I think this one is better. I am hoping that this is gonna require less editing because I could focus more as I was writing it. Now that remains to be seen. And I will report back to, well, to tell you, because if, if I can write an entire novel in 11 days, but it takes me an extra 100 days to edit the thing, then it's, you know, taking money out of one pocket and put it in the other. So, yeah, so we'll I found, see. I, I found something similar, though, with NaNoWriMo. Now, I've already said I didn't reach the, the magic 50,000 words in a month goal, but I, I did reach 30,000. And just, you know, concentrating so quickly on chapter on one chapter and then the next chapter and then the next chapter, you had all the details and transitions and character developments and, uh, uh, and things in your head. And while they were still fresh, you were moving on to the next chapter. Um, so I, I can see some benefit to that. Uh, you know so yeah i think that that's one of the things that facilitates just hammering right through and um what did you do like sometimes i'll get to a certain point in the book where like i'm not really sure and i want to sleep on it i'm not really 100 percent i'm going the right direction do you just plow ahead or do you go to a different part of the book and just write a part of the book you're sure about i plowed ahead and I would get to a point where I would knew I'd have to have some detail or because my internet sucked, oh, I have to research about 
two-way mirrors or something. And I would put three asterisks in there, parentheses around, you know, do some right. research on two-way mirrors, you okay. know, that's and cool. then plow on. Um, that's, that's one of the things that I have discovered because of this exercise that's a big distraction for me. Yeah. If I have access to the internet, boy, I'll go off on a research jag that'll last for days, um, literally days. No, I'm, so, I'm, I'm a little more controlled than that, but, uh, you know. No, I if I like it, it lasts for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget the research jag I, I did for, you know, when I was researching how to cook with a cauldron. That was, you know, that was big fun. And I spent a metric ton you know, uh, reading about stuff and watching YouTube videos. And, oh, man, it's crazy the amount of stuff you can do when you've got the bandwidth handy. Oh, oh, that, that, to me, is part of the fun of being a writer. I, I have learned interesting things that I never would have expected to learn. Uh, and that's been part of the fun. The, the problem is kind of making sure it doesn't interfere with actually getting words on paper, so to speak. Right. And I think that not having internet um, curtailed it. And... I, I found that to be useful to actually getting work done. Uh, there's a lot of those tags in there. Oh, go back and do this. Go back and do this. You know, go back. Oh, I need to find out, you know, what kind of 1967 Chevy would be great to insert in here, blah, blah, blah. All, kind, all kinds of little details like that. But they all are prefaced with three at signs. So I could go through very quickly and, find and flesh them. all that stuff out before I actually literally start uh, doing line edits in the story. Yeah. One of the more common items for me is, uh, since a lot of my stories feature combat and stuff, I'll, uh, I'll put in a marker that says, insert battle here. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And, it, and that doesn't, that allows you to keep your pace, to actually just keep that bowl rolling down the hill. It's... Uh, yeah, then, then I can research tactics and, you know, uh, battle formations and stuff like that later on <laughs> yeah and that's that's one of the values of having a notebook too because a lot of things you can leave, write yourself a note about it because sometimes sometimes i would in the evening i would take my laptop down to the house and uh, uh mostly because i i like to run nightly backups and having internet is required for that activity and it would go it it worked down at the house so that i could uh shoot off a backup uh to the internet down at the house for a, for a first timer of a retreat what do you think is like a reasonable daily word goal or do you think that there should be no daily word goal well i i think it varies from person to person mm -hmm. i uh it depends, you know, some, everybody, I have discovered everybody writes at a different pace. Right. Some people will do 500 words in a day and they'll think it's awesome. And then for them, it's awesome. And uh, that's fine. Um, uh, five or 6,000 words a day when I'm at a writer's retreat is easy. Um, if I was going for word count, because I was not going for word count. Um because uh, I actually finished this novel, the first draft of this novel, three days early. I had actually, um, on the schedule, three more days I allocated to, uh, to working on it, but I was done. I mean, I was, I shocked myself uh, I, that I finished so early. It seems like it might be useful to, especially for a first time, to set some, some sort of minimum goal. Um, yeah. Something that's that. not high, something that's achievable. It could be right. as, simple, as, as simple as 2,000 words a day or maybe just a chapter. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, just, just finishing a chapter a day is a pretty big deal. Yeah. When I was, when I was on my um, regular 545 or whatever it was to, uh, well, two hours, just to say two hour writer's morning uh, thing, I usually um, when I was in the role, 1,000 words in two hours i mean that's that's what i averaged so i i think you just well if you write a thousand words down. a day that's a novel in two months yeah i mean that's a thousand words in two hours so you can right. imagine in a few more hours 
Yeah. So I highly recommend if you if you can sort it out, um, uh, do it. I am very fortunate that um, I had somebody that was willing to uh, uh, provide the electricity for uh, my activities. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you know, it, it was worth it to see family and stuff. And because uh, uh, my my brother's ten years older than me. And he just had open heart surgery. He had a triple bypass. So I wanted to see him anyways because, you know, it's not a whole lot of more trips to California in, in my future. So mm -hmm. if, I, if I go once a year for the next 10 years, I'll be doing pretty good. Absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, I, I highly recommend if you, if you can do a writer's retreat, do it. It doesn't have to be fancy. That's the interesting thing with the uh, gear that I had. I could have been camping for 10 days and done this writer's retreat. I really could have. Yeah, you don't have to be like J.K. Rowling going to Scotland to complete <laughs> her novel. Right. So, and I, I it can be done it. pretty much anywhere. The, the key is really to be prepared before you go and Limit the distractions wherever you are. So Great advice. I just want to say I did complete a story in Scotland. <laughs> it, it wasn't a writing retreat, but uh, three writing sessions a day during my vacation was enough for me to finish uh, one of the. At the time, I think it was the longest story I'd ever finished. It was uh, uh, thirty about thirty thousand words. Very cool. Excellent. So the next big challenge is editing. I'm currently Ooh. trying to get the edits on um, all the beta feedback on my current novel uh, has been back. Uh, and I'm rolling all that in before I toss that out to the editor again in another week or two weeks. So that'll be good. Then, then that'll be done. And then I just got to format it and get it out the door. Well, we're going to plan our writer's retreat after this episode, and I was wondering if we could end, Marty, on me showing the listeners and the viewers my new light. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. Okay. Do you want to say, wait, you should, awesome. say something. you should say That'd something be... like, like, Shay has an idea. All right, ready? Hey, Shay's got a great idea about writer's retreats. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Another finely structured episode, my friends. We'll see you again next week, and maybe we'll have a plan about our writer's retreat.